pardon my background noise. I decided at the last minute to do this very special edition podcast, and I'm running this on my desktop computer rather than the little laptop, which remains a little bit quiet in the background. I think that we really need to have a little, uh, maybe we should call it a desktop side chat, since we don't have firesides anymore, because those produce carbon, right? Environments and treaties. That's what I'm calling this. We need to have a little talk about properly labeling things. Now, I am not going to get into the controversy of healthcare. I will say this. Romney Care, Hillary Care, Obamacare have all been named as they were because enough people thought that they didn't do what they said they were doing. There is, whether you support Obamacare or not, there is such a mount of evidence, not necessarily deciding evidence. There's always someone who, well, no, that's because there's always someone who's got an explanation. So if you want to dispute until the cows come home, I'm not going to stop you. If you want to say that the Affordable Care Act is affordable, I'm not going to dispute you. I'm only going to say that there's enough evidence to make a really good argument that the Affordable Care Act makes health care less affordable. There's an argument for that. And there's such an argument. It didn't do a good enough job to take away the excuses to say that it's not affordable. If you're going to make a health care act and you're going to call it the Affordable Care Act, you need to do such an awesome job, dot your I's, cross your T's, look at every detail to make sure that no one has any excuse to say, oh, this is less affordable. And that didn't happen. Now, uh, back in the 90s, for those of you all opinionated about health care, Back in the 90s, Hillary Clinton was pushing Bill to do this health care thing. He didn't really care. Uh, You know, we won't talk about the politics of the White House during the Clinton years. But it was called the health care package that Bill tried to push through uh, with Hillary kind of behind him, prodding him, was dubbed the name Hillary Care because that was said to not really uh, do health care. Now, Romney care, this isn't about Republicans and Democrats. Mitt Romney had his own health care thing in Massachusetts, and that was highly controversial. And so they call that Romney care. So the, the basic problem, the basic dilemma is to make sure things are named according to what they actually do. And just because you give something a name doesn't mean that, I mean, there's more to a thing than giving it a name. You can't take a red bucket of paint and write green on the outside and have it suddenly become green. It's got to actually do it. I, I think it's, it's a saying in science class. You, you, you know, you go to your chemistry lab in your high school and your college, you'll probably see a poster that says, never make labels lie. And we teach that in chemistry, but we don't teach it much in politics. People are so susceptible to marketing these days. The question is, does it, nothing's perfect, short of Jesus coming back and, uh, you know, angering a lot of people because you can't do anything without making someone mad. So when Jesus comes back and he actually runs things well, you know, there's gonna be a lot of people mad about it. And they're going to say that Jesus is like Loki which raises other questions about why Loki is in mythology in the first place. But when you've got a, a, a law, a treaty, you've got uh, a bill that you're running through your nation's legislature. When you've got a law of any kind, it is essential to make sure that it does a good job of what it says it's going to do. Another example that I'm not going to get into. I, I didn't get into healthcare. I breezed over healthcare. Now, I, I will say this about healthcare. If you have an opinion about 
Mitt Romney's health care plan and Obama's health care plan, you better be familiar with the term Hillary Care. If you're not, sit down and keep quiet and take notes. Don't talk out of turn. I was paying attention to politics during the Clinton years. I was the kid in the front row in our government class who raised my hand. The teacher said, who's Alan Greenspan? And I said, well, he's the chairman of the Federal Reserve. And all my fellow uh, high school seniors, (laughs) why does he know that? And of course, you know, they loved me and I loved them. And they elected myself and Laura Porteous, um, son of, uh, was it David Porteous? Um, We were class politicians in high school. I was following that stuff. If you weren't, if you aren't familiar with the history of the healthcare discussion, the nationalized healthcare discussion in America, then can it? You're you're welcome to pay attention. You're welcome to go back and study your history. I I I I, I have followed what was going on. Dad told me what was going on with the the Johnson, the Lyndon Johnson years and the Great Society program. You know, and, and why Dad joined the military police because he he had enough foresight to see the draft was coming, so he joined the MP while he had a chance. I'm familiar with the politics before my time, and I was paying attention when I was in junior high and high school. Now, if you weren't, can it? Or go back and and review what the topics were at the time and get familiar with it. We don't need people running around with opinions who just who just don't know basic factoids of history. Go go learn those factoids and then come back and talk about it. We need people that are going to help contribute, not ask questions that have very easy answers. We need people to provide. We need people to lift and help the discussion. Just know what history is. It's not about whether you agree or disagree with it. Just know your history, man. And I'm not speaking to you as some 36-year-old acting like all the 20-year-olds are idiots. I'm speaking to you as a 16-year-old in high school who said exactly the same thing. Now, when it comes to treaties, it's the same thing. I was over here in Asia talking, I I mean, I I just went to Vietnam to tour a factory that's owned by a Taiwanese guy. Was it five years ago, George? You weren't there. You wouldn't know. Could have been three, I want to say to be safe, but I feel like it might have been five. This guy said, Jess, we've got to get Western sales in my factory. I need you to find some way to help me. I said, okay, what's your rush? He said, TPP, it's coming. I said, no, it's not. There's no way TPP is going to show up. And this was back in the early stages when people didn't even really know what TPP was because, you know, most people didn't know who Alan Greenspan was in the 90s. I said, okay, TPP's, I said, no, it's not going to show up. There's no way it's going to go. It's not going to fly. He goes, what? Well, the newspaper says, okay. All right. The Lion newspaper says TPP's coming. This is three three, three to five years ago. I'm thinking off the top of my head. I said, it's not going to happen. No way. That's not your timeline for trying to get Western sales. You know, he wanted to get Western customers interested in his company to, to buy products from his factory. He's got an awesome factory, by the way. I mean, he, he his employees love him. His employees are happy. I mean, it, it awesome factory. I, I just, I miss, I miss, I miss knowing that we have that kind of stuff all over the place in America. And this guy's running an awesome factory in Vietnam. And frankly, I think we owe Vietnam one or two favors, uh, maybe three. Maybe you think it's more. I won't debate you on that. Um, I don't like outsourcing jobs to other countries just because they're cheap. But Vietnam, you know, maybe you don't know this, but we have a history with Vietnam. Um, he's going off on TPP, TPP, it's coming. And I said, no, it's not. It won't be tolerated. Well, why? Why? How do you say that? How can you? And that was more of an argument why a little bit. But he was also listening because he's smart. He's a boss. He wouldn't be a boss if he wasn't smart. Not ethical, just smart. There's a difference. The problem is we got too many ethical people that aren't smart. And they let Trump get elected. Um, George, I didn't say that I supported or opposed Trump. I'm only saying that 
they didn't want Trump elected and they let him get elected because they, they had their ethics, but they weren't smart enough to enforce him. That's all I'm saying. Would you stop twisting my words? Thank you. Sorry. Podcast observer is, well, he might be good for you, especially the people up in Reed Rapids who, who can't piece it together uh, always, or at least want me to piece it together for some other fictitious person that they think can't piece it together. But, uh, no, I'm not going to tell them where you're from. That would be interesting, though. You do fit a, uh, a Reed Rapids archetype. Very archetypal Reed Rapids, George. With a little bit of Asian uh, inexperience. Not enough to be curious. So, you had TPP coming, and I said, no way was TPP ever going to get passed. It was never going to be accepted by the public. And here was why. And it wasn't. It, was, and it got canned. And you can have your excuses all day long. Well, that happened because, 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 guess what? I've predicted it. Once again, don't, don't tell me about why you were wrong. I was right about what would happen in history. Uh, it's, it was all, it, it, it's why my theme at the podcast is today's news yesterday. It's like, yup, yup, I was saying that, darn it, wasn't I? Well, maybe not darn it, maybe bless it. So TPP was never going to happen. And that's because TPP was not about trade. And the, at whatever the Atlantic version of was TPP, a, a TPP a la Atlantic, uh, that flopped. I think it had an A in it. The Paris Accord, or a great, I think, I, I think Accord was a bit of a pretentious name that, that wannabe academians used so they could feel self-important. It was an agreement. I think it's called the Paris Agreement or the Paris, but whatever. It's, it's had some boring name and people call it by some other pretentious name so they can feel smart. It, never, it wasn't binding. No one was obligated to do anything. It was just, uh, we can't get the support of our people to actually make this thing have teeth. So we're all, we leaders that nobody likes in any of our countries are just going to stand together and act like we're with each other because we, uh, we all like our big uh, friend circle, the mutual admiration society thing. That's all that was. If, 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 if the Paris Agreement was wonderful and was really going to clean up the earth, then all the people of all those different countries would have demanded that they make it into a treaty. All the people would have said, yeah, clean it up, make it a treaty, make it the law. But they didn't do that. This was just all the leaders who orbit the, the world's problems in their little Elysium offices and don't know what's going on on the ground all decided to get together. I mean, that, if you've seen what Matt, Matt Damon's Elysium movie, the Paris Agreement was invented, imagined, written, and signed totally up on Elysium. It never would have changed anything down here on planet Earth. What it was doing was, it was allowing different countries to boss each other around, basically. France is basically telling America how to clean up. And America's telling France how to clean up. And uh, all the other countries in them. The Paris Agreement was never about the environment. It was sold as that. The other example from history that I mentioned before I would state was the Patriot Act. Arguably one of the most unpatriotic Eight patriotic, patriotic acts. Maybe we should call it patriotic. The Patriotic Act. There we go. Now, there we go. We got it. We've got it, George. We've got a name for the Patriot Act, a nickname, the Patriotic Act. So the Patriotic, the pa- with a C, not a CT, a Patriotic Act. It convinced, I mean, it was from W, who talks with a southern accent like they did on, uh, on Gunsmoke and uh, Bonanza. And, and so it, it sounds like a good old cowboy there that just goes old-fashioned American. Reminds everyone of Clint Eastwood movies. And, uh, you, you know, I mean, that was Bush. Bu- Americans are susceptible to marketing. All the cowboys loved, for the most part, loved W. And then they weren't happy afterwards because they found out what he really was. And they believed it because they trusted him. You know, it, it's their dub. You can't talk, talk, can't talk right, which was endearing. That was a plus to his people. I mean, if you if you like the man, whoever the man is, if you like him, 
all of his bad qualities will make you like him more because it makes him real. So all this, well, Obama does this. His supporters actually like him for that. Well, Trump does this. Uh, well, his enemies don't like him for that. And his supporters do like him for that. That's just, that's how everything works in case you haven't noticed that yet. So we have the, the patriotic, as my new nickname for it, act, which violated all kinds of privacies. I mean, the term patriot in America should be defined by the founding fathers. I'm sorry, I don't have a name for you. Go use Google and you be the expert. Who found this? Homework assignment. Who said this? That a patriot saves his country from his own government. Which signing government founding father of our government who made our government said that about our government and about patriots? Who said that? I mean, when you create a government, you get to say something about what a patriot is. Kind of like when you're published as a writer, you're allowed to invent words. So, the Patriotic Act, the Patriot Act, was unpatriotic. Health care. A lot of people argue it's not about health care. Things need to be about what they're actually about. Now, I don't think you're going to find anyone on the earth that's going to say we don't need to be better with the environment. I, 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 this is another thing about the environment. I get, the, I see these people on, I got friends on Facebook. Yeah, ran into a couple denialists. By the way, I own the denialist. The denialist is a cartoon. I've got it on Twitter. It's mine. I've got it on Pinterest. The denialist is a guy who lives in denial. I own the term, by the way. I've got it on Facebook. I haven't, I've been neglecting the comics, but I've got him. He's out there. I think I've got him on Instagram too, George. So the denialist is not patented for the economy, guys. I own the denialist. So you're talking about, we got these environmental global warming deniers out there talking. Yeah, you, okay. You think that because people don't buy this specific branding of environmental cleanliness that they therefore deny all of it? That's called a straw man argument. Go look it up. It's, it's, where, it's where you, you know, you are debating the other guy in the debate stage and the judges and the audience is watching or you're in court or you're on politics or whatever. You're debating the other guy and you can't win against the other guy. He's got some good points and you know it. And you're never going to convince people to, to not like what he has to say. This is the straw man argument. So what you do is you kind of, you kind of re-describe him. You redefine him. You put a big, ugly hat on him and then you, you, you put ugly makeup on him. You give him an ugly clown face or something. And then you go, you go get a, a bloody knife. You go find a bloody knife and you stick it in his hand. You go, you go create a smoking gun and did 3d print one off and go stick that in his hand. And then you paint this guy up to be something that he's not. Something that nobody would like. And you say, see, he's, that's, uh, that's my opponent over there. Yup. Mm-hmm. And, uh, isn't he wrong? And then, oh yeah, well, he said, but nobody likes that guy. I mean, that, that, that's the evil, that, that, that's the, that's the wicked witch of the West right there. I mean, you know, he, I, I saw the picture. He killed Santa Claus, you know, it, of course, and, and you make this imaginary thing that nobody would dare support. And then you tell everybody that's your opponent. And it's not. You're debating a straw man. It's a fake, you know, it's a fake thing. That's the straw man argument. And if you, if, if you or any of your friends are going to argue that just because someone doesn't want this particular brand of saying what's wrong with the environment or this particular brand of saying what we need to do about the environment that they therefore just want to have smoke everywhere and make the whole earth dirty and say it's not making the earth dirty. Uh, good luck with that. That's not going to hold water. You're not going to get enough. If you keep doing that, you're keep you're going to keep getting Trump selected. You're keep you're going to keep losing elections and you're going to lose. Now, if your goal is to lose, then all right, but then I don't want to listen to you because I want to talk to people who win and I'd love to have you win. 
Whatever your opinion is, whatever your politics are, I just want you to win and not whine and whine and whine and lose all the time. We need winners. I mean, what what do you really... If you did not want Trump elected, I'm asking you, comment on it. Send me an email. Comment on the YouTube channel. If you did not want Trump elected, what would you rather have? Trump not get elected or he gets elected and you complain about, uh, well, that he got elected because. Which one would you prefer? I think there's a lot of people out there that wouldn't know what to do if they won. But if you really do wish that Trump truly hadn't won, you really do believe that, then you got to change your game, man. Now, up to this point, personally, you want my opinion on Trump? Up to this point, personally, I don't see a lot of problems with Trump. I'm seeing more with Comey, how he handled it. It was his right to fire him, but, you know, he shouldn't have uh, handled it that way. He could have been smarter. I mean, the <laughs> what I think about Trump, what I won't say in the Pacific Daily Times and what I won't say in my normal podcast because I don't get into politics on my podcast, what I think about Trump and Comey, the clue was when Comey was running around whining about Apple and the iPhone. Trump supported Comey back then. That was the mistake. Remember remember that video that went around? It's like, take your iPhone out. I saw it. I saw this video. I'm not saying it was true. I'm saying I saw the video. It probably disappeared. If it was true, it should have disappeared. It was... You know, you're in the phone, you got to enter your password, you don't know the password, so look at the time or something, go change the time, type in your time zone, type in an email, highlight the email, uh, tap, uh, tap on the highlighted email, add the email to contacts, create a new contact, type the name of the new contact, you know, add a picture to your contact, look in my photos, for the and look, you're in your phone. It was something like that. And uh, like within days... Comey shut his trap. Apple shut their trap. And, oh, the FBI hired some other company to do it, and, and it worked. Like, and that, and it got shoved, aside, got brushed aside, and that was the end of that. Um, which is another reason to use Linux, because uh, Linux has a different, they have won their open source, so the whole world is watching what they do and looking for bugs, instead of just one, com- only, only the few thousand, whatever million employees at Apple, however many they awesomely have. But instead of that, you've got the whole world watching, which is why open source is good. That's another argument for Linux. But, Comey, I mean, do you know, do you know what happened with the iPhone thing? A lot of people don't know this. Apple, yet the sheriff's department called Apple. What do we do? They said, don't type in passwords a lot. FBI, you know, don't touch it. We've got his stuff in the iCloud. Don't touch it. It was that sort of thing. FBI called the sheriff's department. Type in as many wrong passwords as you can, as fast as you can. It was something like that. And, and, and reset the ID that lets it connect to the iCloud. And the sheriff's department's like, what? And the FBI's, we're the FBI. You have to do what we say. Actually, they don't. Sheriff is elected democratically, so he can tell the FBI to go shove it. The question is, does he have the power to enforce it? But the sheriff's department complied with what they didn't have to when the FBI told them what to do. And so they bricked the iPhone. Apple got locked out of the iCloud account, so they couldn't give the information over. And then Comey ran around, Apple's so mean. Apple's so, so cruel. It's, it, 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 was like, it was like Fast and Furious all over again, op- the operation. So Trump was mad. Because Comey wanted Apple to create one ring to rule them all, so to speak. Tim Cook didn't say what Steve Jobs would have said. Steve Jobs would have said, FBI agents use these phones. You want us to write a a back end, a back door so that China can steal it from you FBI guys and get into your own phones? Steve Jobs would have said something like that. Tim Cook's too much of a pansy to say something like that, which is why Apple's days are behind them. That was the clue. That was Trump's clue about Comey. And that was the world's clue about Apple, about Tim Cook's pansy response. And Trump didn't, you know, the stock owners didn't dump their Apple stock when they should have. That's still coming. Mark my words. I know it's coming. And Trump didn't see that coming. And I wrote about that at Pacific Daily Times. And he got himself in trouble there. 
So now Trump's handling, Trump tried to fire Comey like a businessman politely, can't do that in politics. There you go. So Trump's having trouble. Now, some of the stuff I actually, full disclosure here, some of the stuff I actually like about Trump. Now, I think there are problems with Trump that are coming. I think he's going to declare martial law in some places. <laughs> and, and, and believe me, the people who hate Trump are going to make sure that they keep losing angrily. And people who don't like Donald Trump, they aren't going to shut up and go to work. They aren't going to shut up and get power and look inside their own hearts and figure out why in the world they lost an election. No, no, no. They're just going to go whine and cry and be mad and stay poor and and not become strong enough to win an election next time. They're just going to whine and whine and whine and keep losing. And they're going to go and get mad and they're going to riot and they're going to give Trump every excuse he needs to declare martial law. And it was never a conspiracy. It's just Trump being Trump. And it was all unnecessary. I've got some, some... I think Trump's going to do stuff in the future that I disagree with for the record. Now, if you didn't want Trump elected, you need to figure out some things and figure out what happened. Unless your goal is to just whine and whine and lose and lose and whine and whine. What happened? Why weren't you able to win an election? Why weren't you able to get the person? Why weren't you able to get Sanders elected? If you want, I didn't like Sanders. I thought it's pie in the sky, but you did fine. Or your friends did. Oh, people are, people are talking to me. I'm going to have to turn my phone down because I'm famous and popular. You've got Sanders supporters out there, or you are a Sanders supporter. You're a Bernie supporter. We got to figure out how to win stuff, guys. And the way to win stuff is to label stuff properly. Now, the Paris Agreement was not about the environment. It was about the U.S. and France, etc., telling each other what to do. Now, I think that Americans need to clean up their own environment stuff. I don't think you're going to find people, conservative or liberal, who want the earth and the air to be dirty. So cut with this denialist nonsense. That's a myth. The climate is changing. Go to suspicious observers. Observers spelled with a zero for the first letter because of that cute namespace thing. Find out what's going on with the sun. That is creating big problems. And we need to get efficient and we need to get clean to survive what the sun's doing to the earth. I still think we need to clean stuff, but I don't think that it's all people. CO2 is off the charts. It's weird. And it's a problem. But... Uh, I don't know that it's all, I don't know that we're Kryptoning. I don't know that this is just us destroying our planet like Krypton did. We want to get clean. And the answer is technology. The answer is open source technology. The answer is to get rid of patents on technology that has carbon emissions. If you really want to be serious about cleaning up the environment, there needs to be a, a constitutional ban on any technology retrospectively. We all love the earth, right? Elon Musk loves the earth, right? So I'm sure he'll be glad to surrender all of his technology research to become open source. Any, any millions of dollars Elon Musk may have poured into technology patents and energy patents, I'm sure he'd be glad to donate them to the public so anyone can make them and develop and improve on them. Right? Right. The solution is to take any patent that, re, that affects and results in carbon emissions and make it unpatentable and open source. That's the solution to the environment. You have no idea how many clean, lean energy machines have been shelved and are only on the shelf because of patent laws. You have no idea. I have no idea. If you're serious about the environment, we need to release technology and let people use it. As for this Paris Agreement thing. If you support the Paris Agreement, 
that mean? Maybe you maybe maybe you think maybe you've you drank the Kool Aid and maybe or your friends did and you really you really want to help, but you you believe the lying news. The news lies about Obama. They lie about Trump. They lie about everybody. News has everybody all mad about this Russia thing, which like Trump or hate him isn't going to go anywhere. So they're all distracted. Everyone's all distracted, mad at Trump, chasing the, the red blanket like an angry bull, not thinking. And while Trump's over here doing other stuff, good or bad or whatever it is, the Bernie supporters don't like it, but they're too mad at the red blanket to, to, to focus on the bullfighter that's jabbing them. Everyone's all distracted. Maybe they really do want to help the environment. I believe they really, really do. Everyone. We don't like dirty air for a lot of reasons. If you really want to help, the Paris Agreement wasn't going to do anything. It had no teeth. America needs to clean up America's own air. And France needs to clean up France's own air. And I know we got to get other countries doing stuff, but dude, if you can clean up your own air, if America's big, we don't need the French trying to tell America how to manage stuff. Ask anyone who's been there. Ask your French, your fellow French student classmates who traveled to France. Ask them if France knows how to run stuff. You do not want other countries, as bad as America has its problems, so people say, I love America, we got our problems, of course. As bad as anyone wants to paint it, last thing we need is France telling us what to do. Unless, unless, someone really, truly believes that America gets to tell France what to do and France gets to tell America what to do. Now, who gets to tell France what to do? Do we boss ourselves or do we boss each other? Which one is it? Now, there are people out there who really believe that one country should tell another country how to live. And you don't get to tell yourself how to live. Someone else tells you how to live. You go and tell other people how to live. Other people tell you how to live. You don't tell yourself how to live. Your life isn't your fault. Your life isn't your responsibility. Other people boss you around. They, you, need, you don't need to boss yourself around. You need, you, other people boss you around. You need to boss other people around. Some people really do believe that. It's called Marxism. They run around and they say, hey, you know, Karl Marx really did have some good ideas. You've talked to these people. You know, communism has a lot. Maybe we should think of, you've heard, you've seen those people. All right. All right. They're the ones who love the Paris Agreement. If you love the Paris Agreement, it's because it was Marxism. I boss you, you boss me. No one's responsible for himself. If that's your argument, or if that's your friend's argument, don't be angry. Go for it. Go find the arguments for Marxism. Go find the argument for, for socialism. No one's responsible for his own actions. Oh, everybody's responsible for somebody else's actions. Other people are responsible for you. You're not, nothing you do in your life is your fault. It's someone else's. Those, there are lots of arguments for that out there. I don't agree with them, but they're out there. Go find those arguments and that's your reason for supporting the Paris Agreement. If you're upset about the Paris Agreement. But if you actually, if, if, if that's not what you want to do, if that's not your goal, if your goal is to clean up the air, then the United States needs to be responsible to the United States. The people, not, not, not the elected guy, not the bourgeoisie of France, Orbiting up on Elysium, bossing around the American people, not that, the American people who want the air to be clean, Republican and Democrat alike, need to tell America to be clean. Maybe that's what you think. If that's what you think, that Paris Agreement has nothing to offer you. And we need to get serious about telling Congress, clean up the air. And again, the real environmental denialist the real climate change denier is the guy who wants to clean up the air, who clean up the environment, but does not put open source mandatory environmental impacting patents, outlawing them at the top of the list. This has been a very special edition podcast.